Investing friends, welcome into Investors Club. Great to see you. Got a great show for you. Happy Christmas week. Got a great Christmas show for you. Even though the market is the market is celebrating, the market is celebrating being red. How festive! So so festive for red. Really tough day in the market with tax loss selling. It seems that this is the biggest calendar year ever, uh, which matters. Calendar year uh, matters for taxes, of course. So it's the biggest tax loss year in dollar terms ever. Uh, so it, it seems that it does it is it does seem to be rearing its ugly head uh, as we head into the end of the year. As we have predicted here, as Jeffrey Gundlach first predicted, and uh, and then also GDP got revised higher and uh, used to be in the in the in the nineteen you fifties, know, <laughs> I guess, when the economy was good. I guess maybe the stock market went up. Well, here the the, the economy is better than it rev was revised from two point nine percent to three point two percent. The GDP print from Q three. And it's it, perhaps uh, they think, uh oh, Jay Powell is going to is, uh, is, is going to be more hawkish because of it, it seems. So brutal day in the market. Cassava Sciences. Look what's happened with Cassava Sciences. It was down more than 20 percent on a low volume day. We've had days where Cassava has moved 20, 30, 40 percent, but it was always on like 20 million shares. It was less than a million shares traded and <clears throat> Cassava was down more than 20 percent. It seems what's happening is that pre-data, before Cassava releases its data uh, for its open label study, it's that uh, we, we've talked about if you put stop losses out there, there's people that can see them. They're, they, the, they're, your broker sells that information to some, to some hedge fund that sees that it's there. And if they want on a low volume, it's, it's, it's Christmas week, it's, people are, are off on vacation, they're doing their stuff, they're off with their families, they're not trading as much. It's low volume this week. It's going to be even lower volume next week, and it, it gives uh, it gives with a little bit of money. It gives people a chance. Uh, it gives people a chance to uh, hedge funds, for example, to move the market. And so, if they can see you have your stop losses out there, they can drop the market. They can drop. They drop the stock twenty percent on a low volume week when the market's selling off. Pre data like this, they can go grab those stop losses, go pick up lots of real shares for selling fake shares. We know they can do that. They can sell, they can short as many fake shares as they want to get down to the real stop loss shares. It seems that's what's happening. So we'll take a look at that. Biogen killed a third person horribly again, it seems, and again denied it. Uh, and and uh, we'll, so we'll take a look at that. They've killed 13 people. Uh, and has, have not provided details on any of them. It seems at least three. They, 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 Biogen never volunteers, and ESI never volunteer that they uh, that these people are, are being killed by Lacane Mab. There, so this is in the Lacane Mab Alzheimer's trials. They uh, the, 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 so Biogen never uh, volunteers. So it's people are doing uh, searches and things and finding out finding records and, and finding okay there's a third person. So out of thirteen, Biogen's not volunteered any. There's thirteen that have died. There's now a third confirmed confirmed by outside sources, not confirmed by but uh, but people saying this sure looks like Lacan Mab is killing these poor people, and it does look like it. So uh, there, it's three now. It could be more than thirteen. We'll talk. We'll take a look at that. We'll also take a look at. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the, the value, how the market values Lacane Mab versus how it values Cassava Sciences. And so that's, and that's crazy stuff. And then we'll take a look at ProQR, which almost doubled today on a deal with Lilly. And it's basically the same thing. Their deal with Lilly is not, does not change their science. It doesn't change their data or anything like that. It just gives them an in with the the people that are in with the regulators, the deep pocketed people, the big pharmas, they're in with the regulators. And, and so they got basically a double on, on basically uh, get partnering up with somebody that is, uh, that is cozy with the regulators, it seems. But it's, how else do you explain? We'll talk about how, how poorly Lacan Mab stacks up to Semifilim, Cassava Sciences Semifilim. How else do you explain $12 billion, uh, on, uh, $12 billion being tacked on on one study? However much it was being valued before that, $12 billion more being tacked on. How else do you explain? So we'll take a look at that stuff. Chem Farm has started a study in idiopathic hypersomnia. Chemfarm has uh, aramoclamol, which is a heat shock protein mimicking drug, very interesting, uh, which is the main reason we like Chemfarm. Uh, but now, now they've started, before that they were going after uh, idiopathic hypersomnia and some others with their old main drug, SDX. And so they've started that study. We'll take a look at that. Got a bunch of stuff. 
Am I forgetting anything? I might be might be forgetting other might be forgetting. I think it's might be other stuff. Can't even remember. That's enough for now. Not an investment advisor, not investment advice, number one ranked stock analyst in the world. What we're doing here is the best research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because the financial media lies to us. It's controlled by the hedge funds and the special interests, and they don't have our special our best interest in mind. All they do is lie to us, but that's okay. You know why? Because we have each other. We have investors club, and we're gonna do a way better job than those bozos ever could anyway. So if you like that, please hit like, the algorithm likes like, and you're going to like liking like, I'll tell you that. All right, let's do it. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. Uh, so Saba's now down 13%. It was down more than 20% at one point. Uh, in the Discord, some shrewd uh, dip buyers were in there uh, gobbling up some shares, but a very rough day in the market. NASDAQ down 1.74%, and the S&P, or excuse me, NASDAQ's now down 2.44, and the S&P down 1.74, so brutal day, brutal sell-off. It looks like tax losses plus that GDP print. All right, cassava down uh, that much. What is working? Fusion is back to almost $3. We got behind this one at like two, and this is a, this is a really great platform they have for uh, delivering radiation, not externally through a beam, but uh, through molecules directly to targeted cancer cells, a whole platform of it. Many partnerships, uh, really good executive uh, executives with really good experience in the field. Uh, really interesting stock, and it just won't be held down. Fusion, that's a good one. Sign up for the Small Caps newsletter. Uh, I'm going to do the uh, best 23 stocks of, for 2023 and send it out to all the free subscribers for me on the free newsletter. So sign up for the free newsletter. Uh, and I'll, of course, I'll also it, it, it'll be it'll be all the stocks we've talked about up to this point. Uh, we, we've come a full year, so I think I've recommended like twenty five stocks. So we'll, rec we'll 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 give a we'll say here's the, the, the twenty three. So I'll send that out uh, before the end of the year. Sign up for the free newsletter, and then we got another uh, small cap pick before the end of the year as well to sign up for the paid newsletter to get ahead of that before the bull run starts at the beginning of the year, like we think it will. All right, let's talk about the stories. Let's start with this uh, Biogen <clears throat> Biogen stuff. So, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the, at the we'll, maybe we'll start with that. So this is from science.org. Scientists tie third clinical trial death to experimental Alzheimer's drug. Let's just take a look first at the image. Maybe it looks better over here. Yeah, so you can, this is so people when we're going to talk about area abnormalities related to or uh imaging uh amyloid image amyloid related imaging abnormalities amyloid related imaging abnormalities and so anyway so there's two types of it so when you take these monoclonal antibodies like aducanumab or lacanemab or donanumab uh they have uh they go and they 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 get the plaques Remove and they they escort the plaques out one way or another, but it seems it might be like removing a scab kind of it. It's leaving behind bleeding is one type of area and swelling is another type. You can see the swelling here uh, on the uh, uh, or maybe you can't see the swelling here. Frankly, I'm not even sure if that if they're if they're showing swelling here. You can see the bleeding here, the hemorrhaging. So there's normal hemorrhaging that everybody has. It seems. Uh, and, and so you can see there's a small amount of spotting of blood, but over here, right after they start taking the cane map, this is from one of the women that died. Uh, you can see spots of blood. Look at these big spots of blood over here. This, her, her brain is bleeding. These are, these are like, uh, strokes. Uh, <clears throat> and that's, so anyway, that's, so when area is really bad, that's what it looks like. All right. As enthusiasm mounts for a new experimental antibody that appears to slow cognitive decline in some Alzheimer's patients, a third death linked to the drug during its clinical testing may amplify concerns about its safety. Science has obtained medical records showing a 79-year-old Florida woman participating in an ongoing trial of the antibody died in mid-September after experiencing extensive brain swelling and bleeding, as well as seizures. Multiple neuroscientists who reviewed the records at science's request believe her death was likely caused by the antibody lacanemab. The newly revealed death comes on top of other reports of serious brain bleeding and swelling in the core clinical trial and two other deaths in the extension phase that some scientists have linked to lacanemab. ESI, which attributed the prior fatalities and brain injuries to factors unrelated to lacanemab, declined to comment. 
they they attributed the prior fatalities to, to factors unrelated, which is just awfulness, just lawyer awfulness on their part. The spokesperson added that the age and medical medical condition of any trial participants should be considered when evaluating a death. The Florida woman, however, had no obvious health problems other than her signs of early Alzheimer's disease, according to her medical records. Isai has reported 13 deaths in the core clinical trial, which involved about 1,800 people. Deaths are expected given the study population's age and health, and the company says the numbers were similar in the groups receiving lecanemab and placebo, but it has not made public the details of each death, so in most cases, scientists have been unable to independently assess whether lecanemab contributed to the fatalities. Amyloid-seeking antibodies often, often cause brain swelling and bleeding, a condition known as amyloid-related imaging abnormality. Area, and there's area H, which is hemorrhaging, and area uh, swelling, I forget, uh, edema, which is swelling. <clears throat> area E, which is edema, swelling. About half of Alzheimer's patients have a condition called cerebral amyloid angiopathy. We talked about this last time. We'll, it'll explain it here. But the, 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 this is the, it seems like the people that have this, it's, it's killing them. Uh, this, this happened with the last woman, it looks like. About half of Alzheimer's patients have a condition called cerebral amyloid angiopathy in which beta amyloid plaques replace the smooth muscle of blood vessels, of blood vessel walls. So this, it's, it's removing the blood vessel walls, literally. Their drug is literally removing blood vessel walls in the brain. That's why there's bleeding like that, and that's why these people died. When antibodies such as lecanemab strip away those plaques, blood vessels become inflamed and weakened, increasing a person's susceptibility to area. Whether the woman received infusions of the antibody or a placebo during the core 18-month trial is unclear, but she did get the drug over six weeks in the extension phase in which any participant can opt for the treatment. So she was in... 18 months, a year and a half of the, of, the, of the study and no problems it seems or no serious problems. Then she goes into the extension uh, for six weeks and has these problems. So it's, it's reasonable that she was on placebo, not getting the drug. And then just six weeks in uh, she, this, this, of, of getting the drug, this happened to her. But she did get the drug over six weeks in the extension phase in which any participant can opt for treatment. Before the extension trial started, a brain scan revealed signs of a few microhemorrhages, but they were not serious enough to rule her out of the trial. The woman's friend described a harrowing series of events that began when the patient's first infusion of the antibody as part of the extension trial in August. She was so tired. She didn't get out of bed for two days other than maybe to eat a yogurt or go to the bathroom. The friend says, a couple of weeks later, after the second infusion, the woman complained of severe headaches couldn't complete sentences, and increasingly felt confused about everyday matters, her friend recalls. At a restaurant on September 14th, the woman experienced what seemed like a stroke. She was rushed to the hospital where her friend informed doctors that the woman was taking the experimental drug. Seizures began, causing her to thrash her arms and legs, requiring restraints for her safety. Before... Now, remember, this is what happened to the second woman as well, at which point they administered a drug that, clear, that, uh, that clears away blockages in the brain. And, and so you can have two types of strokes. You can have a blockage, and now there's not blood getting to your brain because of a blockage. Or you can have a burst blood vessel, and now you can't, the blood's not getting to your brain because it's bleeding out of the blood vessels. And so she was having the second type, and they treated her for the first which removed blockages, and, and, and as soon as they gave it to her, she like screamed and thrashed around and died eventually. It seemed that it was removing, helping to remove those plaques. Uh, so, uh, I, don't, I don't think they gave that drug to this person, but it seemed like the, the lecanemab had already done enough. Before a Florida woman received lecanemab in an extension phase of a clinical trial, an MRI scan of her brain on the left had a few microhemorrhages, tiny bleeds, Dark spots, examples marked by arrows. Afterward, right dozens of microhemorrhages are examples. Okay, this is the, what we started out with. So this is, this is the Florida woman. Very little dots here. I don't know if you can see them. But you can see these big pools over here. Obvious pools of blood. 
Brain scans showed dozens of areas of bleeding and brain swelling so extensive that the characteristic folds of the cerebral cortex were merged and squashed. So you can see over here, there's, there's uh, a dis there's like a, a narrow distance between the, it seems like here there's some, the, the edge is pushing in and it, it, it does, it, it does like pushed in there. It looks like the brain is sort of misformed. It looks so pushed in compared from left to right. Brain scans show dozens of areas of bleeding and brain swelling so extensive that the characteristic folds of the cerebral cortex were merged and squashed in substantial parts of her brain, Chermadu says. He calls it a textbook case of severe area, both the clinical presentation and the imaging manifestations. Given the absence of other potential causes for brain damage indicated in the medical records, he adds, Lacane Mab almost certainly was the culprit. The patient had extensive swelling of her brain with some small areas of breeding, bleeding, which caused her to have a seizure and ultimately die. I am confident this was a side effect from Lacane Mab. Here, this is, this is another person. This is Matthew Schrag, who uh, called out um, amyloid, uh, amyloid th thesis. Uh, uh, early, early documents published in the amyloid thesis uh, that, were, that were were possibly faked. He called them out. It seems to me people are saying he's looking for a whistleblower uh, award of millions of bucks for that. He also, it seems, got paid eighteen thousand dollars to try to link that to Kasaba for no reason at all. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. But anyway, th this is, he's one of the people, so he's trying to stay relevant in this, I guess. But he says it's from McCain Map, so he's a second person. Here's a third person, Eric Smith, uh, a neurologist at the University of Calgary, who also reviewed the case materials agrees the drug likely caused the death. He previously consulted for, he, this is a previous consultant for Isai and Biogen on this drug. He previously consulted for Isai and Biogen and was an investigator for the two companies, other anti-amyloid aducanumab. He can, I'm sorry, he consulted with them on their first uh, anti-amyloid uh, monoclonal antibody aducanumab, not lecanumab. The family has arranged for an autopsy which could confirm the woman had CAA and clarify the antibody's role in her death, but it has not been completed, the daughter said. The deaths linked to the antibody, the deaths linked to the antibody cast a pall over recent trial results largely seen as hopeful. Isai has reported that Lacan Mab slowed the rate of cognitive decline among early Alzheimer's patients by an average of 27% over 18 months, a statistically significant effect. Neurologists differ on whether that benefit would be noticeable to many patients or caregivers and some large subgroups in the trial. Did you know this? Some large subgroups in the trial, including women and people under 65, did not benefit uh, statistically significantly anyway. So, FDA is expected to decide on the CANMAB's approval whether to acquire any warnings or cautions for prescribers by January 6th, 2023. All right, so all that, and so here is uh, the chart for Biogen. It went from 197.79 up to uh, like two, like two seventies or something like that, and it's still at like 280 now, even after going up to the 290s or even 300s. So it, it seems that it put on, and so that for a market cap, Biogen is a market cap of 40 billion. So that surge seem to be worth about $12 billion. So if, if it's at 280.25 now, so it's at 280.25 now, it was at 197.79 back then before the surge. So what's the difference? $82.46. Well, $82.46 is 29% of the current price of 280.24. Well, 29% of the $40 billion market cap is about $12 billion. So the, the, it seems as if the market is valuing this Lacane Mab drug just on the phase three trial. Whatever the market already knew about Lacane Mab and was valuing it at maybe zero, but maybe 10 billion in the first place. And then it did the phase three data release and then it went up 12 billion on top of it. So it's valuing it at a minimum, a very, very minimum, unless it was valuing it at absolutely zero, it's valuing it at a minimum of $12 billion and probably closer to what, 20 billion or something like that, maybe more, 20 billion something. But a minimum of 12 billion. 
And then let's remember, lecanemab has dubious efficacy. 27% slowing is, some people are arguing not enough. Some of these doctors are arguing that you wouldn't notice it. So, okay, so there's a dubious efficacy. It kills people. Uh, it's expensive. They, the, these, these are, you have to get at least, you have to get brain scans. You have to get up to five brain scans a year, which are very expensive. When they were talking about the brain scams for aducanumab, they were talking about that drug costing $56,000 a year, and then it costing 100000 with the brain scans. Brain scans are the opposite of cheap. So this, this drug, if you're going to even use it, you're going to, you have to get brain scans in the first place. It's expensive on top of that. You got to go to the clinic. Alzheimer's is a caretaker disease. You have to have a caretaker take you to the clinic, get a needle infusion, sit there with a needle in you for half an hour. Uh, so it, it's dubious efficacy. It kills. It's expensive. You got to go to the clinic, get up to five brain scans a year, and it's a me too product. It's this, is, is it, is it much different than aducanumab or donimumab or whatever Roche's one is? I don't know. Doesn't seem to be. Uh, and then the CMS, the, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services categorically said already it won't pay for it already. And it's still valued at a minimum of 12 billion, maybe 20 billion or something like that. A minimum of 12 billion. And then the Cleveland Clinic and Mount Sinai categorically said they won't administer aducanumab. And my guess is they'll say the same about lecanemab. And that, that as, as an example of high level institutions that say this does not work. Uh, and the market still values it at 12 billion. Minimum, 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 something above 12 billion is what it values it at. So my, the point there is that Biogen is that the FDA is a regulatory agency. Regulatory agencies, instead of in large systems, instead of doing the right thing, tend to get taken over by the biggest players and the smaller players tend to get shut out is what is ten, what tends to happen in large systems as it turns out. Seems to be that's what's happening here, wouldn't you say? And so the market says, we don't care if it doesn't work. We don't care if uh, high level people don't like it and say it doesn't work. They've got the FDA in their pocket, obviously, as we saw with aducanumab. Uh, and so we're gonna value this at more than $12 billion. Okay, and then so then, then that takes us to Lily and ProQR, and I'm not at all uh, talking any smack at all on ProQR, but the point I want to say about this is ProQR is up uh, 66%, and it was not on a data release. They still have the same stuff as before. What do they have though? They've got an, uh, they've got an expansion of an agreement with Lily. They already had an agreement with them, but they're just they just got an expansion of an agreement. New agreement supports the discovery and development of additional assets directed toward high condition targets utilizing ProQR's Axiomer technology. So th 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 there's nothing there. It supports the discovery and development of additional assets. That's great, but this is, th this is not the same thing as revealing data that you've got the, 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 the sort of provably next best drug that'll be the standard of care now. This is just, you've got a really good partner on your side the stock almost doubles, and then they, they, it was only an expansion. It was an expansion of a, of an agreement they already had. So, the, so the, the point is, uh, it, those relationships matter. I'm working on the reason I'm passionate about this. I'm working on a biotech uh, re, research and development, not research and development, research how to analyze biotech stocks. A, a tutorial, a video tutorial on how to analyze biotech stocks. And so, this is one of the things I'm, I'm saying matters partnerships and the ability to get partnerships and buyouts, of course, matter a great deal because of this type of thing. Okay, that takes us to Chem Farm. Chem Farm is, remember, we, this is this, uh, we like rare disease players. This is an orphan drug, not, I, th I think this one is also, I think their, their SDX is also uh, an, or an orphan drug, but their main drug, aramoclamol, an orphan drug, remember the orphan drugs, uh, you get, they tend, they tend to, there's the Orphan Drug Act of 1983, so you get tax breaks, you get market exclusivity, and then the generics tend not to move in because the markets are too small. Uh, so then you, you don't get generic competition, and then you can charge a lot of money because you have to get, you have to recoup your costs, and then the, uh, you, you have to present less data on average to get approved because there's, there's just less people to research on. So they tend to, they've become really lucrative, sweet deals, these orphan drug plays. So that's, so anyway, then this is, this is what they had before Aramoclamol, the S, this is SDX. So anyway, this is, 
uh, for idiopathic hypersomnia. What's idiopathic hypersomnia? An uncommon sleep disorder that causes you to be very sleepy during the day, even after a full good night's sleep. Okay. So they've, they've got, they've got SDX. This is Serdex methylphenidate in, in a, some other indications. Now that's phase two for idiopathic hypersomnia trial designed as multi-center dope op, dose optimizing, double blind, placebo controlled, randomized withdrawal study to evaluate safety and efficacy of KP 1077, as well as to assess brain fog, interim efficacy and safety data expected as early as Q3, 2023. That, oh, and then here is, uh, that's the, the Cleveland Clinic and Mount Sinai. That was a mouthful. 114 people here on a slow week like this. Good to see you guys. I suppose it's because Saba, or partly because Saba is having such a scary day. I think it's just because it's low volume and there's the people, people have those stop losses. And before data comes out, uh, maybe some, maybe some, Hedge funds want to take a position. Uh, you know what? I don't know if we're getting all of the comments here because I thought I left a comment. Sign up for the newsletter uh, to get those 23 stocks. Where's my comment? Where's my comment? I ask you that. I don't know. Anyway, Jay, Jay uh, let's go to the phones. Jay, third revision for Q3 drops the market. Yep. It revised from 2.9 to 3.2. Hope bad news was not leaked out about Sava. I don't think so, because Sava doesn't have uh, the new, they, you know, they're waiting on the third party. I, I don't think it has anything to do with that. Jay, let's go, Joe. Huge amount of puts today, historic. Time to buy more Sava. Remember, that's part of the shorts game plan, the tree, sh the tree shaking to, uh, to get to scare people. They'll, they'll uh, foment. They'll foment by buying puts. That's part of the game plan. We know that. Jim Cramer talked about it. They'll buy the puts and then short it. To knock it down. They knocked it down 20% on like less than a million shares. Treen looks like the FDA may not approve Lacanemab in January. I don't know. I don't know. I think they they, they approved Aducanumab. I think they'll approve it. I don't know. WW, not data leaked since it's open label. Insiders would have sold out earlier if bad data. <laughs> may shit. Good to see you, my friend. This recovery from minus 20 to minus 13 now points, in my humble opinion, to good data. With bad data, this wouldn't recover and collapse totally. I think that this is, they can see when people have their stop losses in, it's, and those are real shares, uh, so they, they, they can short as much as they want because the prime brokers will, will create as many fake shares as they'll pay for, and they can go down and buy, those, buy, those, uh, buy them up down there and then, and then cover whatever they need to cover and uh, wait for data. When is your last small cap pick coming? Sometime between now and the end of the year, my friend. I'm still looking, still looking. I've been, I've been looking fervently and I've got, I've got one I like, but I don't know if it's time to pull the trigger on it. And I've got, I got some more I'm, I'm also looking into. Poke, good to see you, my friend. Hello, Joe, glad I made it to the live session. Me too, my friend. Looks like a good day to buy, buying Saba. What do you think about IKT now, buy? Thanks for all that you do. Uh, they started their uh, their 001 Pro uh, trial, which is which is really good news. I, mean, I was always more optimistic about that program than the Parkinson's, and then the Parkinson's hold. We got it seemed to be like the best news possible. I guess it wasn't that really. They just want some more info, as we as we sort of suspected. And then there's tax loss selling. So it, they've been, they've had a horrible year. Uh, they they IPO'd at ten bucks, and then we got behind them at like. Was it at one buck, I think? And now they got cut in half again. Uh, so there's going to there's going to be tax loss selling. I of course I don't know uh, if, if this is a good time to buy, but my feeling is that going into the beginning of the year, uh, they could be a good one. So I'm I'm think I, I, of course I don't know, but I'm thinking the beginning of the year could be a good bull run, it could be a good rally, and I'm thinking uh, all the all the stocks that all the growth stocks that still have good prospects, but that got obliterated this year, will be the good ones to get in including IKT. Should we buy Sava now? I tend to think so. Not an investment advisor, not investment advice. I tend to think so. The 11 billion was on breakthrough therapy designation for Lacane Mab alone. Is that what it was? Okay, so when we, so in cognition maintenance study, if we get breakthrough for Cassava, 
Cassava is markets, market cap's 1.34 billion. So we're looking at a 10X just to get to 13.4 billion. Just, just to be valued where the cane map is valued, we need at least a 10X. It's crazy. The cane map kills people and doesn't work and it doesn't work in the market as far as all the pricing and everything. And the scans brew. What do you, so do companies like Biogen use their own money to short shares of competitors like Saba? Do they have to disclose that to the FDA? I don't think they would have to disclose that. The big farmers that are potential, they do have some incentives to do it. Uh, these biotech companies, they need to raise money. They don't have cash flows. They need to raise money. If you short their shares, you create extra shares. You, it's, it's, you flood the market with fraud, you lend stuff. Uh, and it's, <laughs> if it was anything, anything else but stocks, you would go to jail. But anyway, and it, destroy, it, it destroys your ability to raise money. So they, the competitors have the incentive to do that. So you, you got to think that it happens sometimes. Potential acquirers, not only does it, if you ruin their ability to raise money by shorting them uh, and making their equity a lot less, worth a lot less, uh, then they not only do they, they have less cash and now they need a partner more, uh, but the, they're just their valuation is lower. So when they're in, in negotiations, they look, the market doesn't value you so high. Stop asking for such a high valuation. The market thinks you're here. We'll give you a 30% premium on that, not anymore. And so they, so potential acquirers have the incentive to short. Uh, people that bet against it have the incentive to short. They're, the incentives are out there. James, so how do ordinary people fight the unfair and harmful aspect of FDA in bed with big drug? Petition Congress? I mean, Congress is in bed with the money. I mean, Congress doesn't work for the people. Congress works for whoever pays them the most. Uh, it seems the best way is to uh, bet on the right small players that then that don't have partnerships and then get them. And that's how you can get these big moves. That was on nothing. They didn't have big data or anything like that. It wasn't a buyout. They already had a, a partnership. They said, we're going to expand this a bit. <laughs> and they shot up 70%. So I, I, would, I would say, like, if Cassava ends up getting a partner, which I think they will, then the right way to play it is to get in with a company that, that is, has the decks stacked against them and is valued as if the deck is stacked against them then gets a partner, and then gets valued as if the deck just stacked in their favor. That's the way to play it. Jay, why do you dislike DNA so much? My apologies for, for talking smack on DNA. Kathy Wood owns a large amount, and Kathy Wood is getting obliterated this year. I love Kathy Wood. She just seems like, I, I love her. As a, she's very smart just to listen to her talk. She's, if somebody, I, I love listening to smart people, and she's very smart. Uh, but she's gotten, and, and then if you look back, she's done very well. Still, if you look back further, if you look back, uh, what, 10, go back max. Uh, she's actually still up. And then you can see, how, and so she did extremely well, and now it's just been such a bear market. And now with the tax law selling, the, the stock, the ETF put in, we saw it's down 80% from its high, the whole ETF. They put in another new low right now. Uh, so I love Kathy Wood, but is that, is the fact that she owns some, such a great, uh, endorsement, she's down more than 80% this year or more than 80% from the top. Uh, Bill Gates, <laughs> I just finished Steve Jobs autobiography. So, uh, Bill Gates makes me laugh at the moment. New DNA launch, all founders, MIT grads. How's that zoom going, Bill? How's the, how's the, how's the zoom going? The, uh, the iPad, iPod versus the Zoom. Uh, all Founders MIT grads, they just launched Enzyme. All Founders MIT grads, yeah, I mean, they're smart people. Uh, and they've done, they've lined their own pockets very well. Uh, they just launched the Enzyme M platform. You'll make me say it again, but I, I've said it before. They, I don't like that they've, uh, look at their, I, I tried, I went to Open Insider today. To, uh, to type in DNA to, to get the, uh, the, 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 all of their cells. I posted on the Investors Club Discord just the last 10 weeks of insiders selling out, million at bucks at a time, two million at a time. It, it, it goes on just the last 10 weeks. It like takes up like two or three pages. 
and I went to, to its page today. It wouldn't load, I think, because it's just too many, maybe. But that's, I mean, that, that's, that's a tort, I defy you to name any stock that has sold out, insiders selling out so much. It's been almost 20 years, and they have, they're, not, they're not close to making money. Their revenue is fake. They will start a company, spin it off with a, with a service agreement, do services for that company, get paid in equity, not cash, and count it as cash sales. That's most of their revenue. Uh, they have 10 to 1 more voting rights per share than the common shareholder. They publish a magazine that goes through every woke thing, like the, the false gender binary. They, they, all, they publish a magazine that says this proves that the gender binary is false and every other woke thing. You can't make any money. You, all you do is hemorrhage money while selling out. Why are you publishing a magazine? And then they are just fundamentally uh, set up incorrectly. They are horizontally integrated. And like Elon Musk says, you should be vertically integrated in innovation. It's not the idea that is, that is so valuable. It's the execution and marketing of the idea. This Steve Jobs book I just read, uh, uh, audio book I just listened to, uh, same thing. All he did was steal and he was the best. The marketing and the execution is, what, is where the value is. So to take a product from the very beginning all the way to market and to own the whole process is what you should do. Like, like Elon does with Tesla, like Amaris does in the sort of the same sort of field as DNA. DNA is horizontally integrated. They're only in one part of the process. So somebody else does R and D comes to them and says, uh, help, help, help us take this to the finish line. And their idea is we'll get thousands of chemicals this way and own a little part of them. But they're, they have an, they have a, an inverse, uh, incentive there. If they've got a great asset, they'll just come in and they can also pay cash to take this to the finish line for a service payment and you don't own any, any of it. So if it's a really good molecule, then, uh, then the people just pay the service. Anyway, it's been like 20 years almost and they're, they're not even close to making money and they never will be until they switch to a vertical integration. I don't mean to talk smack on DNA, but that company is going, it, it's, it's down so, 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 so much. It's only going down further, I think. So <laughs> that's why McCain <laughs> Mab does not have a, a special protocol assessment. No, it does not. Uh, do you know if Sava will be at the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference? I don't know. If they, ha if they are, they have not announced it. Let's look at DNA. I got so, I'm so excited about it. I mean, it's it's been it's it just keeps on going down and down and down, and it's and they've been selling the whole way. And then the 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 the, the CEO does the palant does the Alex Carp Palantir thing, where he insults people that just don't understand how brilliant their strategy is, and he uses foul language. I don't like him at all. Jason Kelly, he's lined his own pockets, hundreds of millions, and he's lined his his the other executives' pockets. They've done so well for themselves, but. Uh, they've screwed shareholders and, and are continuing to screw shareholders. Keith and Suzanne, hi, Joe. Do you know? No, I don't, I don't know if they'll be at that conference. They might be, but I don't think they've announced. Anytime Remy, hello, Silver. Hi, oh, Silver. Anytime Remy released data or a statement that shorts twisted or around, the problem is the SEC, not Remy. Uh, the regulators are going to continue to be awful. Sean, response to request for dismissal due this week, I believe. Not a big event, but may provide further information right. And then there's uh, that, then the next final date is January 23rd, the final date, due date, the end date to dismiss. And then it could, it could come anytime by January 23rd. So a good point that that'll then start the clock on the anytime that this can be dismissed. Good point. Sky Guy, hi Joe. A couple of negative articles from Seeking Alpha the last 20 hours. Oh, I didn't, you know what? Interesting. Okay, there you go. So th th that's further, this, okay, so this is a bear attack. A couple of Seeking Alpha hedge fund short articles, because that's what they are, probably, probably. And along with low volume, this is the perfect time to do it, a low volume week. And then during a, a market sell-off, they got so lucky on that one. Thank you for that, Sky Guy. Dan, the Biden administration vastly overstated its estimate that employers created more than 1 million jobs in the second quarter, claiming historic job growth, when in fact that hiring had stalled, according to a new estimate, down from a million to 
like 10,000. <laughs> yep, right. So before the election, it's a million. After the election, whoops, 10,000. Uh, Jeff, grab more Sabas today and some February calls as well. Ooh, buddy. Well, this is the day to do it, I guess. Careful with those calls, but this is the day, I guess. Bio Investor Morning. Joe, enjoy your daily analysis. Thank you, my friend. What is your predicted share price for Saba end of year 2023? If open label data is good and CMS data is good. I mean, we, we just talked about Lacane Mab being worth more than 12 billion. That CMS data, I think that is going to be approvable. Uh, at some point, we got to get to over 10 billion. So I'll, I'll say a 10x from here. I will say 300 bucks. 300 bucks. That sounds low. That sounds low. 500. <laughs> 500. Sky Guy. Hi, Joe. Two negative. I think it's the fourth time. It's very important, though. Phil, hi, Joe. Crazy market swings. You can say that again, partner. I'm always late to the show here, but thanks for all you do. Thank you, my friend. Interesting show yesterday on the leveraged ETFs. Thank you. I, I, I'm trying to make this show better, and it seemed nobody was interested in the leveraged ETFs yesterday. I thought it was interesting. Thank you for saying so. You thought it was interesting, too. Thank you. Yeah, not, not, I didn't really get money, much good feedback on that. It, it seems... Seems uh, we like the biotech here, and that's great. I like the biotech. Thank you, my friend. I'll, I'll, I'll keep, if, if I think it's interesting, I'll keep bringing stuff. Please keep giving me feedback. Jay, can you do a show on buying covered calls? I'm DCAing into the ground. Maybe I'll do a covered call show, Jay, on the dividends. So starting in the new year, I'm going to do a daily big dividend show as well. Just a quick show of what stocks are paying dividends. Anybody want to chat? See ya. And then for people that are subscribing, I'll uh, I'll, I'll do content. So uh, no, I was doing a, a, a doing some re, re content for just investors, just the subscribers, and then releasing it publicly a week later. But then no one was showing up. So I'm, instead, I'm, I'm just going to do on demand content. So Jay, you're a subscriber. You want to see uh, that you're doing dial, you're, okay, you're, you're dollar, dollar cost averaging into the ground. You want to do buying covered calls. Okay, we'll do a show on covered calls. Now, we already did one for big dividends because there's three ETFs in the big dividends newsletter that we cover that are covered call ETFs. So we, are, we already covered the concept, but we'll do it again. But check that out in the meantime. I forgot I already did that. Check, check that. Check that video out. If Biogen gets approval and Sava as well, how badly will they short stocks and create FUD? Will this be ongoing attacks? I think it'll be ongoing attacks until Sava gets a partner or approved. So uh, then, then, then I think we're in the promised land. So I, I don't think Biogen, I, I really don't think Biogen is, is, matters that much. I think everybody understands where their, what their stuff is at this point. Royce, 11.88 billion dollar jump for Biogen was on September top line, not the BTD. Yeah, that, that's what I remember as well. It was the top line. Also tracked the size market cap change, and it was six billion. And okay, so you know what? They don't even own all of Lacane Mab, so there's 20 billion. Thank you. I didn't even think of that. Biogen doesn't even own all of Lacane Mab. Very important point. You have to add in a size market cap as well. Royce, thank you, my friend. Yeah. So seven plus 12, so 19 billion. And now it wasn't valued at zero before. So a baseline of at least 20 billion, which is consistent with what we saw with Eli Lilly. The market is valuing these things at 20 billion when they pop on phase three, an extra 20 billion on phase three pops. Now it's consistent with what we saw before. Thank you, Royce. Very astute, my friend. JC, good morning, my friend. Hello, Joe. Good morning. Down 13% on no news. Wonder how much it would go up on good news. Hopefully 300% like, um, and like Madrigal that we just checked out for Nash or maybe even more. I think maybe even more, my friend, especially on CMS. Depends how much it'll, it goes up before then, but I think even more uh, for CMS. It's like CRISPR says, Jay's talking about Ginkgo DNA. Let us use the platform. They take a percentage of ownership. Yes, uh, 
CRISPR, how are they doing? And it's sort of like CRISPR. Do you like CRISPR? Eh, I'm okay on CRISPR. Amorous in 23, I don't know. That one has such a long runway. That one is a, that one's a story stock, a long-term one. They have the process that's working. They're all, their growth is ridiculous. Their growth is every quarter is like 100% for like 20 quarters in a row now. They, it's working. At, at Ginkgo, it's not working. At Amorous, it's working. But they're, or they're not there yet as far as making money. They say they'll be profitable in 2023. We'll see about that. I, I'm dubious myself. But 2024, perhaps. Uh, there, that, that one, uh, Amherst is, is a much more interesting one, I think. Good morning, Joe. Don't get to catch you live usually, but thank you for all you do. Goose, thank you, my friend. Talk to me, Goose. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it, my friend. David Ted, institutional investors would not have bought $50 million worth of shares if they had a tiny bit of doubt regarding the upcoming Saba data. Great point. They just raised money. Uh, if it was, If people thought it was going to be bad data, they wouldn't have done it. Goose says, good morning, Joe. Oh, sorry, already got Goose. Opinion on ORMP. I saw that you gave me a super sticker. Oh, Oramed. Is there something I don't like about this? one? Because I do like, there is something. I, I, I looked at this one. This, this is the oral insulin, right? There, I, I wanted to like it, and then I think I found something about it I don't like. And then... Keith and Suzanne, 10 bucks super sticker. Thank you very much for the super sticker. Uh, pair bowing down saying, thank you. Uh, let me do Ormet in one second. Let me just get the silver saying, I enjoyed yesterday's show as well, Professor Joe. Thank you, silver. So we did the, the leveraged ETFs yesterday. It's so interesting that you actually would have been better off for the entire history of the market sitting in a leveraged ETF. That sounds like what crazy kids do. No, it, it, it's actually sound for long-term investing. Who knew? Who knew? And then Treen says, DNA got very high institution, about 88%. Hopefully, uh, Sava gets more institution as time goes on. Yes. And that, I think that has something to do with those MIT guys being so smooth and, and well-respected. They got a lot of institutional ownership. Kathy Wood, for one. Uh, and I do like Kathy, so... Uh, Oramed, so Oramed is very interesting. Okay, so this one, and now I'm starting to remember. So once upon a time, yep, we got MNK, MNKD, Mankind. I liked that stock very much. Alfred Mann was a billionaire philanthropist, uh, inventor of, of like uh, the pacemaker, Op, the uh, bionic eye that was actually work that they actually got to the point of working where people that were completely blind had a robotic eye where they could see incredible in, in, many more things than that he, he did incredible stuff and a huge philanthropist Alfred Mann he had a company called Mankind I just know he was very 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 successful in his life and then he started uh, Mankind and what they did was they had Technosphere which was these little uh, pellets, microscopic pellets that you could link a drug to and inhale it. And it turns out insulin is, uh, and it turns out a number of things are delivered very well. For some, it turns out for some reason, it's just a, it's a very efficient, good way to deliver drugs through the lungs that way. And not, not necessarily just with technosphere, but in general, the lungs happen to be a delivery mechanism that, that, that work very well. The, the stomach is obviously problematic because of all the acids insulin in this case so in, in they were going after type 2 uh, diabetes or just diabetes in general delivering your insulin that way and so insulin is a protein you eat insulin and you digest it and it doesn't make it through into the, the doesn't make it through into the bloodstream to, to be active so oramed has a way to make oral insulin uh, to make it to, 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 to take your insulin as a pill uh, make sure I'm remembering that correctly Engage research development, including oral insulin. Okay, so in general, I love it. It's a market cap of three hundred seventy-five million. Uh, you you paid the uh, the sticker, uh, so let me let me get back on or let me report back on Ormed tomorrow. I, it might it might just be that I've I've settled on lung de lung delivery being better than oral delivery for insulin, but there was some, I, I I I wanted to like Ormed. And then for some reason, I didn't. It, it might just be that, but let me get back to you. Let me look into it again and get back to you on it. 
I think maybe there's other competition that's doing inhaled insulin as well, or just it, 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 and mankind is out there with it. it uh, you can have a Frezza already. And I think maybe that I'm, I'm just, uh, why would you want the oral when you can have a Frezza? Or, or maybe I looked at, at it, maybe it's just not working that well. Maybe it sounds good to take orally, but I, maybe I looked at it and I don't think it's working that well. Let me look into it again. But there was something, I wanted to like it, but there was some reason I, I, I didn't like it. Biobag holder says oral insulin seems insane. Jay, it's not Biden that runs those numbers. <laughs> Literally so oral and sin insane. CEO being a lawyer is odd. Maybe that was it. Maybe I maybe I wanted to like it and then I looked at executives and didn't like it. There was something about it I didn't like. Please tell us, Bio. The Blackburns have the pick of the month with Verna. Way to go. And not only that, their comments are usually smart as well. You remember Verona, they brought it up and it was down at four in May. And even even just lately, it's up from the last week, it's up doubling again. So this one is sex tuppled since May and it doubled in the last week. My gracious, Verona. They're doing inhaled. Oh, interesting. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that, that's so funny. Verona, okay, so they're, they're developing a dry powder inhaler for uh, COPD for, pulmonary, for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Interesting stuff. I wonder if they can do uh, oral, uh, I wonder if they can do inhaled insulin as well. Anyway, I, I like the, I think I like, in, uh, I think that maybe it was a number of those things. I think I like inhaled better than oral and maybe the executives were, were, were the, the lawyer, is, I'm not sure. But great pick on Verona. And thank you for the 10 bucks. Uh, and is there a way we can get Kathy Woods, to, Kathy Wood, I think it's just Wood, right? Kathy Wood uh, to buy Sava. Trin, uh, you know, we've tried that. We've reached out to them. Now, I, I think one thing they sometimes say is that they like platforms. And this is a, a this is a single drug rather than a platform, although it's sort of a platform in a drug in that it could be uh, for a number of age-related diseases. It could be that filament A degrades as you get older and a number of diseases come from that. So uh, if, it's, if, if the market's going to love it, then she should, she should as well. But what do you think of Microsoft buying Blizzard Activision? Same kind of pick as your last small cap, also the biggest owner of open artificial intelligence. I looked at that, the argument, so for, for the antitrust stuff, I can't remember now. So the argument is if they take those titles, now you'll have to buy that system because they won't be available on other titles, which I guess is true. Uh, I don't think, I don't think that those, it is, and you're right, it's the same, it's both tech, merger, arbitrage. It's tech, merger, arbitrage with waiting for regulators, you're right. But I, I, I think that's where the, the comparisons end, frankly. Uh, thank you for the question, Jay. Jeff, Joe, thanks for all your efforts and sharing your insights with us. You're very welcome, my friend. I really enjoyed your leverage ETF show yesterday. I'm really glad, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't, I've, I felt like I missed the mark with it because I also, I was, I was like, it was so technical and I was like saying so much technical stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't flowing very well. And then I didn't get any good feedback on it. I was like, ah, oh, that missed the mark. So, but th thank you. I'm glad the, 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 for, for some people that content has got to be compelling because it's, it is compelling. It's, it's a, it's a sound fundamental long-term strategy to be in a leveraged ETF. Who knew? Who knew? I found yesterday's show very informative. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. JC Seeking Alpha says the drop is related to concerns over a corporate presentation. The company, what? I mean, Seeking Alpha is full of FUD. They, they did repost their December presentation. The only difference was Nadav, who just passed away, is no longer the chief medical officer. Uh, I think his first name is Jeffrey. I can't remember the other, the other guy's name. I think his first name is uh, Jeffrey. I can't, I can't remember, but they, they, they've got the new, the guy that was already there, they switched him over to CMO. 
silver. Now let's all sing it together. Dun 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 My Verona. <laughs> all right, great to see you guys. Uh, we'll do it again tomorrow, uh, and then we'll we'll be off for uh, Christmas. Have a long Christmas weekend, so that'll be great. Uh, see you in the Discord. Sign up for that stuff. If you haven't signed up for the free newsletter, I'm going to send out a, a quick summary of all of this year's picks, recommending for 2023. If you if you weren't unfamiliar with them, and uh, so sign up for that. And uh, I'll see you guys on the, in the Discord. Have a great night. See you.